What is up, fanboys and fangirls? Welcome to another Review Point, coming to you, of course, from fanboysanonymous.com. I am your host, as always, Tony Mango, and today I'm going to be talking about Thor Love and Thunder, the most recent release in the MCU chronology of how many movies and TV shows at this point? God knows how many hours as well between everything. Um, so I will be doing my normal thing here. I'll be breaking down everything I can think of to talk about in a spoiler free version first, and then I'll give you a warning. I'll go into the spoiler stuff, talk about the hits and the misses, everything in between the things I liked, the things I didn't like, so on and so forth. So of course I invite you to do the same, drop a comment below, tell me your thoughts on what you liked, what you didn't like on your thoughts on my thoughts and anything else you want to chime in about. And of course, just as you should do for any YouTube channel, if you're listening to this on YouTube, of course, that you are a fan of, you should make sure that you are subscribed. Ring that little notification bell as well, so you get the email alerts of, you know, if I go live from something, or if I post a new video or whatever, and hit the like button. That'll help out quite a bit with that SEO juice, and, you know, give me a little bit of a boost there. If you have anybody that you think might be interested in this podcast, hit the share button, pass this link along to them, and... You know, um, if you feel so inclined to help out on the monetary side of things, there's a couple different ways that you could do that. You can hit the little thanks button that's on there. It's kind of like a little tip jar, but there's also the join button that gives you access to the members only content, which is the same as what you can find over on patreon.com slash fanboys anonymous. It's just, uh, you know, you get some bonus features and you also have the pick your poison tier where you can request something. So you know, there are a multitude of different ideas that I'm always sitting on the back burner for that I don't get the time to do. You know, we've been talking for a while about doing the Mount Rushmore of Spider-Man villains or about doing more fan tracks of more episodes of the Spider-Man animated series or, for instance, Batman or, you know, I mean, we we want to do those um, Tim Burton and Joel Schumacher Batman fan tracks. Like there, I mean, God knows how many different things that I have well, just sitting there on the list of make sure you do this and make sure you do this. And when we start getting into the things like the fantasy uh, booking things like we do in this mark out moment stuff, and we get into how would I write such and such for characters, then, you know, I mean, fan fiction is another thing that I want to dive be uh, very deep into and, if you want to make sure that you sponsor some of that, that's what the Pick Your, Toy, Pick Your Poison tier is all about. So keep that in mind. And, um, you know, just the fact that you're listening to this and you leave a comment is also a great way to support. So anyway, as I mentioned, spoiler free first, then we get into the spoilers. So don't worry about if you haven't seen the movie yet. What do I think about Thor, Love and Thunder? Well, uh, in the spoiler free sense of the words... I liked it just as much, basically, as I liked Thor Ragnarok. Now, Thor Ragnarok, I had ranked pretty high, but not, you know, not the absolute highest in the MCU for me. I mean, I have on, like, the current thing as of, uh, you know, July 8th now, I've got Ragnarok at, let's see where it is on my list, just double check. And some of these I might have to rearrange a little bit now that I've Rewatched some of them a little bit more times and everything. I currently have Thor Ragnarok at number 16 out of all of the MCU. It is on my B tier, you know, few in the A tier, uh, few in the S tier above it, but it is a rock solid one. There are, yeah, there's things that I don't like about Thor Ragnarok. I feel like, for instance, I'm somebody who thinks that Thor Ragnarok is a little sillier than it should have been. I would have appreciated a more subdued manner of which that movie was handled where it doesn't always have to be jokey about everything. And sometimes the jokes undercut the tension and sometimes the jokes are really kind of unfounded. Like uh, the the fact that the warriors three just get killed as easily as they do by Hela in that movie. Don't get me wrong. I still like it a lot, you know, but um, this is kind of the same. Uh, it has very much the same tone where it does have a few serious moments here and there, but it is mostly a comedy. And this one tries to be a little bit more of a romantic comedy, which, you know, there's good romantic comedies. There's plenty of bad ones out there. It's the same as like any other genre. I mean, how many action movies are legitimately great versus how many action movies are garbage, but people just like them because they like action. Same thing with horror. How many horror movies are actually legitimately great movies and great stories being told 
versus a bunch of jump scares and slasher gore and everything. So romantic comedies, they fall into the same thing. Comedies do every single genre. How many comedies out there are legitimately great versus how many of them just have shock humor or, you know, somebody falls down and you're supposed to laugh at that. This movie, Thor, Love and Thunder, I should say, (laughs) just to be sure if nobody's talking about anything else, uh, it follows that same sort of mentality as Ragnarok, where it's predominantly the laughs and the laughs are great. You know, I've been cracking up in the movie, but I do feel like I could have done with a little more seriousness. My personal favorites of the MCU, to give context for how I look at this at the very least, currently ranked, again, they might change in the future, Iron Man, Captain America Winter Soldier, Infinity War, Endgame, Guardians of the Galaxy. That's my S tier right now. Then the first Avengers, then Civil War, Black Panther. Those are the movies that predominantly are serious. I mean, Black Panther is not a funny movie. That's really like there's not much to laugh at there. And there are moments in the Avengers and, of course, Guardians of the Galaxy is very much comedy. But Avengers Endgame is not the funniest movie. Iron Man, not the funniest movie. Winter Soldier, definitely not the funniest movie. But I do still appreciate the comedy side of things. So tone wise, if you're going into it wanting a comedy, I think that this gets a hit. If you're going into it wanting an action film, I think that the action is great. You know, the fight sequences are pretty great. They're not the best by quite a bit of a margin, but that doesn't mean that that's quite a bit of a margin towards the end of, hey, you know, well, this is one of the worst or anything. No, I still enjoyed all the action sequences, but it is still lesser. So it's more of a comedy than it is an action movie. The romance side of things it's not the most romantic movie or anything, but again, you're not going into this movie wanting, uh, I don't know, the notebook or something. Why would I go with a notebook? You know, the notebook's not really that romantic of a movie. It's really just about abuse of people yelling at each other. <laughs> Overrated fucking movie. But nevertheless, the romance side of things, it's not super duper there. So again, if you are not super into the romance thing, that's not going to be a problem. If you are very much into that, you're probably going to feel it's underwhelming. But I do think that for a movie that is, I guess, a, a spoiler free. Yeah, I'll still stick with the spoiler free version of this. For a movie that's predominantly about a character has lost his family and wants to kill all gods out of revenge. And then another character who has cancer, the movie's got more laughs in it than I think that it necessarily should have. So I kind of ding it a little bit when it comes to the tone, just because I think that they wanted to go full blown comedy and then they needed to rein it in once in a while. Then again, you know, Jojo Rabbit was had its funny moments, but it's about something that's really not at all funny. So It's Taika Waititi's style, and if you like Thor Ragnarok, you are more than likely going to like Thor Love and Thunder. If you are more like I am, where if I were writing the Thor movies, I would write something a little bit closer to a mix of Thor 1 and 2, just not as poorly done as number 2 was, but, you know, structurally, there's more things with Thor 2 that I think make sense, you know, I mean, Thor, let's put it this way as well. Uh, Thor the Dark World is on my absolute bottom tier. It is the, I think, third from the worst thing in the MCU that I have right now. And the only reason why it's not the worst is because I cannot stand Ms. Marvel. Eternals was garbage. And what if I felt was a real disappointment. So Thor the Dark World is only above those. And... I like how they decided to have Thor be a little bit more of a Viking in that movie, but I think that the villain sucked. And I think in this one, Gore, Gore's kind of disappointing. You know, I mean, a character that is extremely threatening and has more to offer than what this movie is able to give him to do. So that's disappointing as far as villain wise and character wise. 
Now, if I'm going through and I'm trying to use a an outline called making the grade, that's another version of review point, essentially. I already went through like tone, you know, atmosphere, that side of things. But on the characters, that's something I'll get into a little bit more on the spoiler section. So hold off on that. On the technical side of things, acting wise, I think that pretty much everybody did their job. Nobody's going to stand out and win some kind of an Oscar. But I do think that they all pretty much nailed their characters and what they were supposed to be. Christian Bale, I feel he probably has more on the cutting room floor that can flesh out the gore character but that he just didn't get an opportunity to have those scenes as much. So I'm willing to bet that despite the fact that I don't think he was a particularly strong villain, I think that he probably gave a better performance that we aren't seeing. Chris Hemsworth, of course, fantastic as Thor. I mean, this guy is just absolutely amazing at this part. Jane, you know, I mean, she, uh, Natalie Portman keeps the same, basic character that we've had before so she didn't lose track of what we had gotten from jane before so that's you know continuity wise korg of course you love korg from the last one you're gonna love korg this one valkyrie same sort of deal so acting wise it's a hit but nobody's gonna win an oscar visually i think it looked pretty beautiful you know the the effects the costumes the sets the makeup I didn't see anything issues, uh, anything issues. I didn't see anything wrong with it. I didn't see any issues. I am not, of course, somebody who understands that stuff all that much. So I can't pinpoint, well, the makeup was slightly off on this. You know, that's something more for what my wife would be able to do with, um, you know, she's done prosthetic stuff. She's done makeup and um, different things for different projects. But um, she didn't point out anything to me. You know, she liked the movie quite a bit. I'll talk about some of the things that she had said as well. Uh, but it gets passed for me, you know, the visuals are, I've seen some people complaining about it, saying the CGI is awful. I'd like to see where the CGI is awful, because to me, it didn't look bad. <laughs> you know, I think we've gotten past the point now where, you know, certain things are fake. I mean, 90% of the things that happen in this movie are not actually happening, unless it's something like Natalie Portman is sitting on a chair and somebody comes by and puts a bag of Doritos on the uh, table next to her. Yeah, I'm sure that Kat Dennings did that. I'm sure she put the Doritos or Cheetos or whatever on there. But I don't think somebody's flying on a Pegasus and going into space. And, uh, you know, there is no flying hammer. None of that stuff. So, yeah, I mean, it's CGI. But at the same time, you shut your brain off a little bit. I didn't see any problems. I didn't see janky CGI anywhere. Audio wise, I am not a sound designer, so I can't pinpoint those things, but it passed for me. I thought that the sound was fine. It's not like it's interstellar where I couldn't hear some of those things or even worse, Tenet. My God, I don't know what the audio mix was going on with that movie. But music wise, I do feel a disappointment in that. I like their use of classic rock in this movie, but I'm missing that orchestral symphony Thor sound. I like the Thor themes, you know, when we got the end of Thor Ragnarok and the Asgardians are all in the ship and Thor theme from the previous movies is playing. That's what I am missing on this. So I'm going to say it's a little bit of a little bit of a miss on the audio. Funny enough. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. I, don't think that there's much else that I can say that isn't going to be on the spoiler section. So we're going to transition over to the spoilers now. Uh, generally speaking, though, I like the movie. There you go. <laughs> but if you don't want to know the spoilers, come back to this later on after you go see the movie. I do recommend the go see the movie as well. But from now on, spoilers, you've been warned. There you go. Let's get into the characters and everything and some of the specifics about this. So... As far as the Guardians of the Galaxy goes, they are just kind of peppered in at the beginning, and much of them don't really have anything to do. I mean, Drax, for instance, I don't even think he has any real lines, other than maybe like, we're losing the fight or something. So I, I appreciated their appearance here, but 
it was a little underwhelming. Now, they shouldn't have been in the full movie because then that would have taken away from the actual film. But I'm glad that they appreciate. I'm glad that they appreciated. I'm glad that they bothered to put them in there because if not, it would have felt like, why did they just skip over this? You know, why would they take the end of the last time that we saw these characters and they're together and then just go and then they left? That would have felt really disappointing. So it could have been better, but I think that it was still a thumbs up. I'm not a hundred percent disappointed in the lack of some of the characters that were rumored to appear here. We're supposed to get a scene with Grandmaster, supposed to get a scene with E-Tree. Yeah, I want to see those scenes, and I am the type of person who thinks I would love the four-hour cut of this, because I, if I like something, I can't get enough of it with that. You tell me to watch Terminator 2, my favorite movie of all time, I'm going to watch the extended cut with all the deleted scenes put in there. And I'm not going to watch the theatrical cut or the TV cut or something for any means, but I can understand why they got cut. And I ultimately don't feel like I, I missed them. If that makes sense. It's not like, Oh man, this movie would have been a thousand times better if it would have had grandmaster in it. Or that's the big problem is that they didn't have Hulk show up in here or that they didn't have, I don't know, uh, an elongated sequence flashing back to Odin and to have Anthony Hopkins. So, you know, I mean, take that for what you will. I thought it was funny that we got actor Loki, actor Odin, actor Thor. Uh, we got Melissa McCarthy popping up as fake Hela for this. So Sam Neill, Luke Hemsworth, Matt Damon, that bunch. I thought that, that was funny. The Melissa McCarthy thing uh, that took a lot of people by surprise in the theater, so that was funny. And to bring those characters back was another funny touch, but also to bring them the later on, there's a good joke where uh, fake Loki and fake Thor are like, oh man, should we start to work on a play that can depict these things that are happening right now? I think that we should. I didn't hear a no, you know. So I like that little part. Uh, I'm glad that we sidelined Meek because I didn't like Meek. So uh, thumbs down on Meek before and thumbs down on Meek here, but thumbs up in the sense that we didn't waste any time, really. Sorry, Meek. <laughs> Zeus in this. Now, plenty to say about Zeus. I thought Russell Crowe's interpretation of the character was very strange. He was a little too goofy for my tastes. But if they are going in the sense of all the gods are lazy and kind of just dicks, then I guess it works. And they were, you know, essentially saying that they were saying the gods don't interfere because the gods don't care. You know, you are going to watch over your own people if that, and they're basically just going to have orgies. So I get it. But at the same time, I would have appreciated maybe a little bit more of a serious Zeus. Looks like we might get, that in the next one, if they do another one, they are hinting at it at the very least that that's going to be Zeus and Hercules getting revenge on Thor. Hercules, by the way, I do not know who has been cast as Hercules. That is somebody who pops up in the post credit sequence and people were happy to see him, but I don't have any fucking idea who that guy is. I'm trying to like look it up right now to see to see if I can find that information, but I'm not actually hmm. Yeah, you know, I don't I I, I can't find out who that person is actually. Brett Goldstein? I don't know who Brett Goldstein is. He's from Ted Lasso. Never seen it. So okay. That's just completely lost on me. But Hercules is a character that I'm not the biggest fan of. I've never been one to read a Thor comic period, but at the same time, I really am less interested in Hercules. So I'm hoping that the next movie is not just about Hercules. I'm hoping that we get Brady Ray Bill. I'm hoping that we get some kind of a cool villain. I don't really know who could be the villain though. Cause it's not like you're going to go with you look the troll as the main villain. So I guess maybe it would be Zeus. And that's how they're going to tie into that. But I don't know. I really like the post credit sequence with Idris Elba returning as Heimdall and welcoming uh, Jane into Valhalla. I thought that that was nice. 
Jane herself. Let's talk about Jane. So the cancer storyline is not something I'm super fond of from the comics. I felt like that was more gimmicky than anything else. And I'm not the biggest fan of this character's got the powers now. You know, I'm not really like, I don't ever want to see them waste time with like, Mary Jane got Spider-Man's powers. What does she do with it? Oh, Lois Lane's got Superman's powers. How does she cope with it? So I don't really like the whole Jane becomes Thor thing, but I like it better in this one, how they made it to where Thor did an enchantment of for Mjolnir to protect her. Because if it would have just been suddenly she's worthy enough to wield Mjolnir just the same as Captain America, I think that that would have been kind of ridiculous. She's not a warrior in the sense that Mjolnir would look at things. I I, I mean, I'll put it this way. Uh, they did this better here than I thought that they would. But it still feels like I don't think I necessarily would have gone this direction for a Thor film. And I'm glad that Natalie Portman got some time to shine here. And I kind of feel like she also, maybe that was part of the bargaining of this whole thing was, hey, I'm only going to do one of these movies again if I can kick some ass and if my character dies. And she got both. So credit to her. This might have been the best that we've gotten out of the Jane Foster character outside of potentially just the fact that she exists in the MCU, you know, they had her as like this astrophysicist that's written a bunch of books and everything. And I was fine with that too, for that matter. If they would have just kept her in the background and just said that she's been working with shield and she is one of those great minds of this era where we see, you know, for Spider-Man in school that he has like Bruce Banner and uh, Howard Stark and these other, you know, Eric Selvig pops up in this movie. I'm really a big fan that they put him in there and that they put, even though I don't like uh, Kat Dennings playing her part. I'm not a big fan of that character. Uh, Darcy has been in what two, now three movies now and WandaVision. And she is one of my least favorite characters, but the fact that she was still there is good. I would have incorporated her as well. So I liked that. I appreciated that. I'm really glad that they brought Sif back and that they didn't just kill her off. I don't know what they're going to do with her. I don't think that they have any idea what they want to do with her, but the fact that she can still be a part of this is great. I wouldn't mind her actually being the love interest for Valkyrie if they want to go in that direction in the future, because Sif in the movies has not really expressed any interest in Thor. And even though I like the Sif and Thor love story a little bit, it's not my favorite in the world or anything, but it is something that, hey, if Thor was going to, he, he loses Jane in this one. So he's going to have to move on and try to find somebody else to be in love with in the future. It's not going to be Sif, it seems. There's no indication that those two have a romantic relationship. So maybe Seth and Valkyrie can get together. I, I'd like that. I think that'd be cool. Uh, pretty pretty cool. I don't know about who the hell uh, Thor could be involved in in the future. I mean, maybe they bring in Enchantress? Amora? Then again, we've gotten a little bit of Enchantress here and there. I don't know. Because you can't have Scourge anymore. You already threw him out of the window. And you've got uh, Sylvie, who has ties to the Enchantress thing, and yeah, I mean, maybe that is maybe that is the, the the idea that they go with Enchantress and Amora is the love interest for the next thing, and she's one of the villains, and I don't know. But I appreciated the uh, the Sif character coming back. Not a fan of how they just wrote off the Warriors three to begin with, and then in this one they make fun of them again. They're like, and this guy and that guy and whatever. I'm like, what the hell? What did they do to you guys? You know, they were fine, great characters in the beginning, and then you guys just killed them off and acted like they were shit. Valkyrie's good in the movie. I think that her presence wasn't really 100% necessary in some parts. You know, if she basically, if she was off this movie, I don't think the movie really needed to change much. She doesn't contribute a ton to it. Korg, same kind of thing. He's fun. He is a funny supporting character. 
I liked the little bit where he's just like at the end, hey, and I met a guy named Dwayne. Like, okay, cool. Dwayne's got a mustache. <laughs> he's got an 80s porn stash. Cool, why not? Uh, Korg is, Korg's fun. I like Korg. I mentioned Gore. I already talked about Thor. Gore and Thor. Yeah. <laughs> Thor the God Butcher. Maybe that's a, an amalgamation in the future. But I, character wise, I, I was digging pretty much everything like that. I really loved <laughs> this stupid little joke about uh, Bao, the God of Dumplings. <laughs> I thought that, that was fucking adorable. I thought it was so good. The goats, a uh, tooth gnasher and tooth grinder, I think is the name. I don't remember hundred percent before they don't say the names in the movie, but I thought that that was uh, hilarious when they would just be like, ah, just yelling all the time. My wife, of course, absolutely loved that. Cause she loves animals and she loves animals that are a pain in the ass. <laughs> like <that. laughs> I am so curious to see when people like new rock stars give a breakdown of all the different gods that show up because Bast is in this, uh, Dionysus is in this, all these characters that I'm sure just go right over the top of my head because I'm not a mythology expert by any means necessary. So I want to see, you know, this is uh, Quetzalcoatl and this is the god of fucking, I don't even know what, the, you know, the Nazca lines are represented in this thing and, and so on and so forth. Weapon wise, weapons were characters in this one. Thor ended up wielding Zeus's thunderbolt, which was great. And that was a cool weapon. That was just the way that they showed that off. You know, he could split it. He can use it for this kind of things. So he could teleport with it. He could do all these things. That was very, very cool. If I were a little kid and man, I, in the heyday of this MCU where you'd buy these action figures and everything, I would love to play around with that. If I was a little kid, I loved that Mjolnir and Stormbreaker had a bit of like the the ex-girlfriend thing going on with Thor where Stormbreaker is annoyed that he's still kind of pining after Mjolnir and feeling a little bit upset about Mjolnir and you know oh so you move on pretty fast and everything and I, I thought that that was hilarious that was one of my favorite parts of the movie was just Stormbreaker being upset but I really more so on the story side of things I am a little disappointed that Gore was set up and then that's it. It was one scene of your daughter's dead and then you meet your God. And coincidentally, that's just when they kill the Necrosword wielder. So you just get the Necrosword and kill him and go, I'm going to kill all gods. And then that's it. And I would have, I, I don't know. I, Again, I am the type of person who thinks the four hour cut of the movie is something that I would want to see. I would want to really dig deep into the character and I would want to feel more sympathy for the character and I would want to fear the character more, but you don't have the time to do a four hour movie. You got to kind of skip along. And I guess in the grand scheme of things, Gore is just an antagonist. He's not the center of the film. The center of the film is the Thor and Jane relationship. So they did need to cut some things. And I understand that still, I think that if we would have gotten more for that, that the ending would have mattered more. And I do not like the idea that Thor is going to be a dad in the future from, you know, Gore's daughter. It's just not the direction that I would have wanted to go. So I I don't want to see Thor and his little girl in the next movie. That I'm not looking forward to. That character, she, I couldn't even tell you her name. She does nothing for me as far as like, okay, she's a cute little girl that's a little sassy. They fucking all are. Everybody does that with little kids in movies. It's always... She talks back, and isn't she funny? Uh, it loses its value after you've seen it in 100 movies, you know? So I'm not interested in the future of that. I think that she is on the miss side. I think they could have brought the character back, and I appreciate that they did the whole thing where Gore's real main motivation was he wants his daughter back, and that's why he brings her back instead of just killing all gods. But I think it would have been better if they would have just said, and he left her with Valkyrie and them, and she was another part of the new Asgard. I don't want to see Thor 
being a dad in the future one. Sorry. That's a thumbs down. That's a miss. Um, I'm trying to think of some of the other elements to talk about here. Here is something that I am incredibly interested in. We saw in Omnipotent City two Celestials looking in. Just, hey, what's everybody else still up to? We saw very, very briefly these statues for the Living Tribunal. And I really want to see the Living Tribunal like full force in one of these movies. We got Eternity, though. Eternity didn't talk. It was just sitting there cross-legged like a Buddhist statue or something. And that's a cool interpretation because it looked like Eternity from the comics. And we didn't get some kind of, hi, I'm Eternity and this is how I talk. And if you didn't interpret me that way, then this is kind of an interesting voice. And it's character actor such and such playing the part. But that is something I want to see more of. I want more of that lore. And I want to to dive into characters like the living tribunal. I want to, I really want them to have the beyonder and the beyonders and secret war and to really dive into these things. So the fact that that just kind of got swept along pretty easily, that was a mess. Cause I'm like, no, I want more. I want more. I want more. But, but the fact that we got eternity fucking fantastic major thumbs up there. So the movie leaves me in a sense feeling like those those extra cut hours could have made this go from a movie that I enjoyed to a movie that I love. And instead, it's just a good movie. A lot of people were saying online, is this one of the worst of the MCU? I have no idea what movie they saw. I mean, we, you know, we all have different opinions and everything, but to say that this is on par with Eternals, Eternals was a mess. Maybe it's not your favorite movie, Thor Love and Thunder. I don't know where I'm going to place it yet. I'm thinking I'm probably going to place it around the same spot as Thor Ragnarok. Maybe a little bit lower than Ragnarok. Maybe I might put it. Hmm. Uh, okay, so I'm either going B or C tier for sure. And I don't know if I like it better than Shang-Chi. That's difficult. I've only watched Shang-Chi once. So it's around that range, which is around where I put Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So I actually might put it under Multiverse of Madness. It's so, ah, man, that stuff. It's somewhere around there. I don't know exactly where it's going to land, but it's that low B, high C tier where I think that it's great in a lot of ways. I think it's good in a lot of ways. I think it's bad in a couple ways. And I don't think it's terrible in anything. So. I do think overall this is a hit. I would like to see them rein in the comedy a little bit and to do something a little bit more serious. But if they keep moving, making movies like this in the future, and if they do more than one more Thor movie, I'm going to keep seeing it because I still do enjoy it quite a bit. I was laughing a lot. I enjoyed much of how they did things. I like that they killed off the Jane character and how they killed her off in a way that she went out as a hero. And I like that they set up more of that lore for the future. I just don't like the fact that there's the little kid. <laughs> yeah. So you tweak a couple things, you make the villain a little bit more interesting and you get rid of the kid at the end. Then I think that it's you know absolutely fantastic, but the way that it is, it still gets a major, major thumbs up. It's still a major hit for me. I still very much recommend it. And I am going to be incredibly shocked if this isn't better than Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I'm still very worried about that movie. I do not know how that movie is going to work. But this one does, and it's my seal of approval. So I want to know what you have to say. Drop your comments below. What did you like? What did you not like? What do you think the future is for Thor and the MCU in general? Where does this place on your ranking if you go ahead and you do tier lists and stuff like I do and whatever else you want to talk about. We will just continue the discussion in the comments below, but in the meantime, make sure that you are subscribed, ring that little notification bell, hit up to Patreon, click the join button, check out anything else that's happening over on fanboysanonymous.com. Follow on Facebook and Twitter. If you are into the pro wrestling side of things, go to smartoutmoment.com and you can follow me just specifically at toe mango all over the place and under a mango tree. So 
I don't know what the next thing is that I'm going to be seeing you guys about, whether it's going to be some kind of random fan tracks or if it's going to be something more akin to just a post on the website or another movie review, but whatever it is, hope to see you there. Adios for now, everybody. It's time for me to geek out.